Well, I got to be honest with you guys today. You know, I've been struggling with a lot. You know, lately I've been struggling first and foremost with this heat out here in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Yo, it's hot. <laughs> but no, nah, in all seriousness, you know, I've been really struggling just being a father, uh, being a parent. It's been very challenging. Um, been stressed out with work. You know, I've been traveling a lot lately. And so, you know, I've been living out of a suitcase. And so when I come home, I got clothes all over the place. You know, my house looks a wreck and it just, it's, it's defeating at times, I think, for, for all of us here in this room. Life just could sometimes just take us through a whirlwind. You know, I think we all could relate and attest to this. And so, you know, one of the things that I've had to learn uh, over time is to how to manage my struggles. And so I think a lot of you guys today, some of you guys may be struggling with your finances. You may be struggling with that, that loved one that's just getting on your last nerve. You know, you need some space away from, or some of you guys actually may be struggling with a death in the family. And so, you know, over the, over the years, I've had to really figure out some methods to help me overcome my personal adversities, my own problems, my own issues that I carry every single day. And one distinguishing thing that I was able to, to learn um, later on in my life is the ability to ask a simple question. And that simple question is, what are you grateful for? And imagine just for a second, if we were all to wake up in the morning and allow ourselves to ask ourselves, you know, what are we grateful for? And starting small. And I want you guys to take not just a moment to think about what you're grateful for, but to really feel that sense of gratitude because there's power in that. And so today I really just wanted to share a few things that not only I'm grateful for, but a few methods that allows me to find beauty in my struggle. The first thing I'm grateful for really just today is my own personal struggle. You know, I feel that without my hardships and the things that I'm currently dealing with, there's no way that I could be the person I am today. Another thing that I'm grateful for is perspective. You know, being able to change my mind and to be able to view a, a particular situation in different ways is powerful. But I'm also grateful for the power of choice. That's a quality that we all possess and that we all have in us. And how we get to view our own life experiences, how we get to view our own situations, that's something that we're all capable of day in and day out. And, you know, growing up is, is crazy. So my mom is actually here today with my dad, and my mom is white. My father is African-American. And I didn't meet my biological dad until I was 18. He was in the music business. Um, so I know he traveled a lot. He was doing his thing. But uh, for my mother, I grew up with her. And it was challenging because I went to 11 schools in 12 years. And we moved a lot. We was very nomadic. You know, I lived all throughout Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, California, a few other places. And growing up, because I was mixed, there wasn't a lot of mixed kids in, in the late 80s, early 90s. I felt isolated. I felt like I never was a part of anything. I was never white enough. I was never black enough. And so that kind of put me in a box by myself. And, you know, having abandonment issues because we moved a lot, I was never, never able to really connect with people on a, on a personal level. And I felt just very insecure about who I was as a man. And not until I got older, really probably about five to six years ago, I actually was able to tap into that, to that struggle and shift my thought process and allow that to be the fabric of what I do today. And so I've been blessed and fortunate enough to, to be a basketball coach for these last 15 years. I've been able to travel the world, I do camps in Africa, I go to China, South Korea, all over Europe. And I'm working today with some of the most uh, prolific NBA players in, in basketball. And going through my hardships as a child, that allowed me to be able to grow into connecting with these players. And as I work with these players, my job is to teach them how to overcome their adversity. So some of these guys and girls may be going through the lack of playing time. Maybe they're going through a shooting slump. 
Maybe they're going through their own personal issues at home with a loved one. But whatever it is, it's my job to develop the mindset. And so some of the things that we do today that I want to share with you guys is, one, obviously focusing on what we can control. And I want you to know that the struggle that you guys are currently going through today is developing the strength that you're going to need tomorrow. You know, and I'm, I'm always saying, like, for me personally, when I feel like I'm progressing in life and I'm moving forward, I feel great about myself. You know, I feel like I'm accomplishing certain things. But on the contrary, the days get dark for me where it's borderline suicidal, where I feel stagnant. I feel stuck. I feel like I'm not able to overcome a, a certain uh, hurdle, whether it's in work, as a parent, you know, as a friend, as a son. I beat myself up because I tend to overthink, and, and that's where it really gets depressing. And I feel like that we gain strength by being transparent. You know, when you're able to really look at things from multiple ways, you know, or at least two ways, you know, some of you guys may be looking at uh, this particular picture, you know, and um, looking at it from a, from a standpoint of what is he doing or what is he talking about or whatever the case may be. But you guys have the power and to be able to see things in multiple ways. That's a gift that we all possess. And so another method that I've really learned how to just calm myself down is to be able to dissect the problem. And when you're able to take the emotion out of whatever it is that you're going through, you know, take a deep breath, take the emotion out of that particular situation and allow yourself to break it down into small pieces. The biggest question that you need to go from that state point is, what can you learn from this? What can you extract? What, what lesson can allow you to be able to grow and build yourself back up out of this hole? Because it's a common mistake that I think we tend to overlook on how serious we take this life. You know, Martin Luther King once said that if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to be moving forward. You just have to. That's the only thing that we're really in control of. Control of. And some other methods that I do when I'm kind of overthinking my situation or my struggle is when I'm sitting down, sometimes I'll just get up and go take, take a walk. Because there's motion can create emotion. It can shift your thought process just by moving your body. You know, for some of us, I always tell my clients, when you're going through that, that particular slump as a player, they wake up and make your bed. Start small. You know, allow yourself to be able to stack these good days and, and build momentum because that's really the key to all of this is stacking these good days. And allowing yourself to, to build your self-esteem, to, to build your spirit back up when you're in that dark, dark hole. But you have to start small and you just continue to build and build and build. And, you know, I, I remember uh, it was May 1st, 2012. And I took this picture uh, with my son, who was just a few months old, and I was battling uh, homelessness for about three years. Nobody knew about it. I was, I was coaching still at the time. I was trying to get myself, uh, you know, off the ground. And right before I took this picture, the night before May 1st, I remember I was, in, I was just in a dark place. And then I was living in uh, the backseat of my car. I had two trash bags to my name. And I used to park in front of uh, homes in certain neighborhoods. And I was in the back seat, and I was just trying to get comfortable. It was raining outside. It was like 4 a.m. And I was just, I was ready to end it all. I had a, a bottle of Xanax pills in my hand, and I just wanted to feel that sense of numbness. Like, I didn't have that light of hope. And I felt like if I just ended it all, then things would be okay somehow, some kind of way. But life again, could throw you into a whirlwind. And it's not a coincidence that I had the radio on. And I remember listening through the speaker as I was trying to get my head positioned so I could try to go to sleep. There was a lyric that came out and it was like something along the lines of when you hit rock bottom, that's a solid foundation to build off of. And all of a sudden, I just had this euphoric feeling, something that really changed my spirit, something that really rejuvenated me at that moment. And I used to keep this journal it was a yellow, like, like little pad. 
and I had it in the driver's seat. And I remember grabbing that pad and I started writing everything down that I was grateful for. And I just felt this, this moment of hope. I saw that light at the end of the tunnel and I really started to shift my thought process. And the very next morning, I actually went to the gym, started working with some players, got my money up and was able to afford a little rundown motel uh, on the north side of Dallas. So as I picked my son up, this picture represents a choice. It allowed me to overcome my, my worst moment. It was the lowest of my lows. And then as I had this moment with my son, I'll never forget that feeling of just like, man, I have, I have strength, I have power. I learned something new about myself that allowed me to overcome a struggle. And so from that point on, I shifted my whole business strategy, I, I shifted my whole focus, and I moved forward in what I know I needed to do. And Jimmy V said one of the, my favorite quotes uh, when I was homeless, when I was dealing with this at, at the particular time, he had once said that to me that there's three things that we should all do every single day. He said, number one is to laugh. Don't take life too serious. Number two is to spend some time in thought. You know, we need to really create a space for us to really think about what it is that we're going through to evaluate our internal emotions. And he said, number three, you should move your emotions into tears. And if you do those three things, that's a heck of a day. That is a heck of a day. And imagine if you guys could create momentum and stack good days. I promise you those are things that's going to get you out of your situation. And lastly, I talk a lot about the power of choice because these are decisions that we have to make in our personal lives on what we want to create and what we want to really become. And I want you to also think about whatever hardship you've been experienced, whether it's a tragic deck or tragic death or some sense of trauma that you're experiencing, when has it never worked out? When has it never worked out in your life? Because life has a funny way of just working itself out. And when you learn how to grow through your experiences and not go through it, there's a big difference. Growing through something is allowing yourself to, to become the person that you was meant to be. When you go through certain things, you're resisting the outcome. And it's very important that you guys understand that there is beauty in your struggle. Thank you.